Today we are checking out Peter Jackson's collection of World War I planes. This morning we are seeking out something really special for you guys. We want to find something in the Blenheim and Marlborough area which is awesome to do but indoor just in case you get a rainy day when visiting the area. And we found the perfect stuff is the Omaka Aviation Centre. So everything in here at this exhibition, Nights of the Sky, um, actually belongs to Sir Peter Jackson. So it's the world's largest private collection of World War I aircraft okay. and memorabilia in the world. Oh, wow. All our assumptions about the Omaka Aviation Centre have been completely thrown out the window as we walk into this very first hangar. This is more than just your dusty museum with a few planes on display. Each plane has its own scene set out as if it was a movie. The first exhibition that we are checking out is Sir Peter Jackson's Night of the Sky. It is a collection of World War I aircraft and artifacts set in magnificent scenes. It depicts the aircraft in context and sometimes it recreates some incident that actually happened in the war. In between the gigantic aeroplane scenes, there is a few exhibitions that display rare memorabilia from the World War I. It's absolutely amazing to see this huge collection which is worthy of a national collection. There is beautifully crafted trench art and there is also personal items belonging to the famous Red Baron himself. But we'll get back to that a bit later. And because World War I was basically the first conflict that was actually fought in the sky as well, before that everything was on the ground, the entire exhibition shows the evolution of the aircraft from the most primitive one, which were literally just a bunch of pieces of wood strapped together, to the latest one, which were actually quite good technological fit. It's super interesting to see the technological advancements of these planes which started off as pretty sketchy designs to a lot better planes that you would feel more comfortable in. Aside from that though, all the exhibitions sort of tell a story of the individuals involved in the war. These guys are scared, you know, average age, probably 20. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the average lifespan of a pilot at that time was six nine years. <laughs> wow. Well, huh. One of the most striking scenes that we see in this exhibition is that of the Nui Pot 27 which has crashed into a tree. These scenes look so realistic and they have been created by Peter Jackson and his film studio Wingnut Studios as well as the Weta Workshop which you guys have seen our video from Wellington and they were behind all the special effects and props from movies like The Lord of the Rings. For that reason, that's why all these mannequins look so realistic. And another really cool thing is that there's a lot of animals and birds hidden within the scene, so it's really worth looking out for those. After seeing the Allied Forces side of this World War I hangar, we're then moving on to the Axis side, with loads of memorabilia on display. World War I is a conflict that Laura and I have heard a lot about. I'm from France and she's from the UK, so most of our childhood spent in classroom during history lessons was about World War I. But it's very interesting to find out more about the New Zealand involvement during this conflict. It's quite interesting to see that a country so far away from the conflict had such a major role into this conflict. The last major scene that we are seeing in the World War I exhibition is the death of the Red Baron. The Red Baron was probably the most famous German pilot during the World War I conflict and he got shot down over France. It's impressive that their collection here includes such a massive amount of rare artifacts about this very scene, despite the fact that, well, we're in New Zealand, nowhere near Europe. Our guide is then showing us a few more aircraft in this exhibition. It's absolutely amazing how many aircraft did Peter Jackson get. And some of them are in quite precarious condition with massive holes in their wings. And then that's the end of our World War I experience. But the Omaka Aviation Center has much more to offer and they also have a World War II exhibition. And this is where we're heading to right now. After getting some context into the Russian warplane that is hanging in the cafe area of the Omaka Aviation Center, we're then heading on to the next exhibition in the next hangar, which is called Dangerous Skies, and this goes over the World War II aircraft. 
However, the first thing that we're seeing is more of a scene rather than the aircraft itself and one of a Kiwi pilot that crash landed into a British garden party and joined in with the festivities. That's the Kiwi way, right? In this hangar and also in the last hangar we were in, there were a lot of really rare planes with information panels stating things like the last engine running plane of its kind and one of the last two that can fly and the only replica of its kind. Any aviation buff is sure to have an absolute whale of a time with all the rare planes on display. But as you might have guessed, we're not really aviation buffs, but we really do dig the Omaka Aviation Center because it is really more than just the planes. Of course, the planes are impressive, but it's just the way that they are displayed, which really makes this place stand out. So after taking a look at some more really awesome scenes in the Dangerous Skies exhibition, we start to learn more about Stalingrad and the Eastern Front in this exhibition. And one of the really interesting things about this exhibition is to learn about female pilots. We're learning about the story of a lady called Lydia Litviak, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, which was one of the rare female pilots in the USSR. Hashtag feminism. After leaving the massive hangar with all those huge World War II scenes, we are passing through a small exhibition with more memorabilia about the era, and then we are heading toward a massive Stalingrad room. The Stalingrad Room is basically a massive dome theater with a CGI movie about the airstrike on Stalingrad. This is probably one of the most famous battles of World War II, but the staggering number of casualties of the conflict are absolutely amazing. And this movie shows it perfectly. It's a great way to give you a massive impact of numbers and make you understand the toll that such a war takes. So we've just arrived at the Aviation Heritage Center in Blenheim. So I'm going to put my phone on flight mode. Wait. 